Do you hear me when I say? Long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Come on.
right hands, a hand that never changes. God never changes. Oh, God, we're just so happy to be here today, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're just so happy to have you here today with us as we continue to just praise and worship God, as we continue to just lift up that bloodstained banner for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we continue to glorify him and what he's already done. He's done a mighty work in each and every one of us already, and he's continuing to do a good work in each and every one of us. I'd like to thank all of you here this morning who's joining us live. This is a live stream. This is not pre-recorded. It is live. We are here. So what you hear today is live. And oh God, we just thank you for what you're about to do right now, Father God. He's blessed us, oh God, with another day, a day like no other day that we can just celebrate him and worship and glorify him. Yes, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing today. I would like to start out and just thank you. I'm Reverend Parker. For those who don't know, I am Reverend Parker. And I just want to say thank you again. As I stand here to open up this morning service, we're just so blessed that God has brought us through a whole nother week. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. Because of the love he has for each and every one of us. And I just want to say thank you for being here with us. Uh, I'd like to open up with a psalm reading. Before we get reading, and I'll uh, we get started here. And uh, oh, as long as we got King Jesus, uh, we don't need nobody else. That song is just going to resonate with me all through the day. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. I'll be reading Psalms 100. That's Psalm 100. All of you grab your Bibles wherever you're at in your homes and read along with me. I have the King James Version, whatever version you have. Just open up your Bible and let's read what God thus says the Lord. It says, make a joyful noise unto our Lord, all ye, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Oh, thank you, Lord. Knowing ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Oh, I just read Psalms 100 in its entirety. Blessed to the hearing and reading of his most holy word. If we just continue to just lift up his name and glorify him, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thy Lord and thy Redeemer, as we uh, start out with the Lord's Prayer chant, let us all just pray right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debt. And we forgive those who indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We just want to say thank you this morning for joining us. Thank you. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I was glad when they say, let us. Go into the house of the Lord because God is doing a mighty work in his house. We're all a part of God's temple. He says he indwells us. So we all should just want to praise and worship him as we welcome our pastor this morning. Welcome him back after that week of illness. He's back and ready to go. Full of the spirit. Oh, yes. Full of the spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. As long as we got you. You're right. I'm glad to be back here on Sunday. And uh, thank God for all that he has done yes. thus far. Yes. We, uh, again, want to thank you for joining us today once again in our service. Different but still moving forward. Yes, Lord. Transformation. We're going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later. And 
we have to deal with in our world today has been challenging. But we thank those who continue to give to the cause of Christ and the expansion of the kingdom of God through your tithes, your offerings, your sacrificial giving. We thank you. We count it a privilege that you choose us to allow us to have stewardship over that which God has given us to be, have stewardship over. We right now are like the Levitical priests who are taking care of the temple yes, while everyone else is out someplace else. We're still taking care of the temple. And so yes. we want to make sure that in this passes that we can get together once again and praise and worship God. We look forward to that day. We don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. And so thank God for you and for that. Also, we want to remind us to go to our website and catch all of the things that we're doing during the course of the week. We do a lot during the course of the week, uh, not only on Sundays, but um, Tuesdays, our women, um, Bible study, Coffee with Christ. You want to join that uh, with uh, uh, those who are there already. You want to join that. Uh, I uh, snuck in uh, to the class uh, this week and uh, they were having such a good time <laughs> that yes, uh, I almost felt like uh, coming back next week. But I know it's a women's Bible study. I'm giving you the time and your space. Uh, but it was just a blessing. I could see <clears throat> that things were happening. So you want to join that Tuesday nights at uh, 6.30. Also, noonday Bible study on Wednesdays. <clears throat> and another Bible study that uh, we're doing and People are excited about that and joining that. So you want to be there. And then Wednesday night Bible study also uh, as we continue to go through the book of Revelation. Uh, what a hard and tough book to go through uh, yes. to see God in a whole other light. But yet, he's still God. Yes, Lord. And uh, then on Thursdays, the anointed One's Bible studies for those uh, with uh, disabilities or uh, those uh, we want to, uh, special needs, uh, those with special needs, we want to uh, give them opportunity to have that Bible study also. And then Friday night, First Chronicles, amen, uh, we're going through that. David uh, just brought the ark back to the uh, city. And the celebration is on. And so he finally did it God's way and not his way. And it turned out the way it was supposed to. And then Saturday night, prayer from five to six. Come on out and pray with us and continue to pray with us. And send those prayer requests in. We want to pray for you. Uh, you can send them in to our comment section right now uh, on our, as we live stream. Or uh, you certainly... Uh, Welcome to e email us uh, your prayer request through our uh, email address, um, which is uh, cvc1620 at att.net. Or you can go online, cbcsr.org, you can go online and put your request on there, and also other things when you're giving and your offerings and mail it in to our address which is there all the addresses all the information is there so we want to and if you really have questions about it call our office we're still here in the office during the day from about 10 30 to uh, on to we're done actually a lot of work still need to be done around here we still have things going on and it's a blessing it really is uh you're going to, be going to see some great things uh, happening in the coming weeks. And so we want to be uh, in a 
it's all because of not only you here today, but those who laid a foundation before us. And so we want to continue to pray uh, through this, these unsettling times. Um, so just check in, make sure you know where we're at so that you can stay in touch. We'll, we'll let you know, you know, sometimes you can find out what's going on with people. You know, as you send in your prayer request, people say, oh, well, you know, such and such is this. And, oh, yeah, I know that person. And, yeah, I remember that person. So, you know, please uh, uh, email us, call us, let us know that you are uh, still around. Uh, we'll try to contact you the best we can. Uh, but again, we are probably more busy now than we were before. Uh, <laughs> Amen. And trying to put these Bible studies and things out. And so we want to, uh, but we want, just call us and let us know you're doing okay. 707 Just let us know that you're doing all right during this time. Or let us know what prayer request you might have. So we thank God for you as we continue now to move uh, forward. In our service, we're going to offer up prayer. Um, amen. We want to have uh, Reverend Francis come up and offer us up prayer. Thank you for waking us up this morning and clothing us in our right minds and giving us a portion of the strength. My Heavenly Father, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus, my Heavenly Father, to come down, my Heavenly Father. Somebody needs you for one thing and somebody needs you for another. Yes. And I'm just thanking my Heavenly Father for you because you've been so good to me. You've been so kind. Thank you for being the King of Kings. Thank you for being the Lord of Lords. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace. Oh, we love you today. We glorify you. We magnify your name. And somebody needs you right now, my Heavenly Father. Somebody's calling on your name. Yes. Lord, I'm asking you right now to put a hedge of protection around the whole world, my Heavenly Father. Because we need you, my Heavenly Father. Because you're God and God alone. Yes. You're the only one, my Heavenly Father, can take care of, my Heavenly Father, all our needs, my Heavenly Father, according to your riches and glory. We love you today. Yes. Glorify you. And I just say thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Yes. So I just keep on saying thank you in the name of Jesus. I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You've been good to me. Somebody needs you, my Heavenly Father, in the hospital. Somebody needs you, my Heavenly Father, in the old folks' home. Somebody needs you right now, my Heavenly Father, in New York City. Somebody is calling on your name. Somebody somewhere is wondering what must I do to be saved. Yes. Oh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you've been so good. Yes. And you've been so kind, my Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, my Heavenly Father. Oh, from the rocking of my cradle to this present moment, you kept me. Yes. Oh, you kept me, you never left me. Yes. Oh, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, to touch our church family, my Heavenly Father. We can't see him, my Heavenly Father, but touch him, my Heavenly Father. Oh, continue to let Community Baptist Church be a lighthouse on this corner. Yes. Oh, we're going to keep lifting you up in spite of, in spite of anything, we're going to keep lifting you up. Yes. Keep calling on your name. Yes. Keep telling you thank you. How good you've been to us. Oh, you've been, been a mighty good doctor. Yes. You've been a mighty good lawyer. Yes. You've been a mighty good keeper. Yes. Oh, I just want to say thank you. Yes. You've been good to us. Yes. Oh, and I'm you right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch our pastor this morning, my Heavenly Father. Let him bring that preached word that the Spirit has to say to the church. Touch Brother Parker, my Heavenly Father. Touch Jim and Maria, my Heavenly Father. Build them up well, weak where they're weak, and strengthen where they're torn down. Oh, we love you today. Glorify you and magnify your name. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my spirit 
and my Redeemer. These are another blessed words in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to look in a passage of scripture. I want to encourage us today in the midst of what we're going through. Yes, so Lord. I want us to understand some things that we can look at while we go through what we're going through. And so Jeremiah is one of those prophets that offer us yes. some things yes. that he's reflecting on that reminds him and them of what they've already been through. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 6 and 7. We're going to key off that sixth verse, but verse six and seven. Jeremiah chapter two, verse six and seven. Amen. And it says, Neither did they say, Where is the Lord who brought us out, up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness? through the land of deserts and pits, mm -hmm. through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed where no one dwelt. Mm -hmm. I brought you into a bountiful country yes. to eat its fruit and goodness. Mm -hmm. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. And so, that is verse 6 and 7 of the second chapter of Jeremiah. I just want to remind us that God is able to guide us through. Yes. God, and you might want to put God is still able to guide us through. Like, like a lot of people, like many of us, we all wake up every morning and learning to accept the new reality of the world. Yes. Uh, we live in, we have to adjust and adapt to some new protocols, procedures of how to live our lives. It's an adjustment to make sure that every time I have to leave the house, I have to have Clorox wipes and Lysol and gloves. It's an adjustment that, uh, to remember to wear a mask wherever I go. It's an adjustment having to go into the grocery store and walk down the aisle in one direction, making certain I stay six feet away from the next person or waiting until a number of people are in the store that allows me to go in. It's an adjustment. And hearing people saying, I'm going to need you to back up off me because you might have that wrong. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Not cover on her, they call it Rona. You might have that Rona, baby. Amen. Amen. I need you to back up off me. Um, it's an adjustment seeing shelves empty at the store that used to be packed. It's an adjustment having to uh, wipe off all your, your groceries and, and making sure they're clean before you store them or put them in your refrigerator. It's an adjustment keeping the kids in the house, amen, when they should be outside playing as this, the weather gets warm and the sun is shining and spring is dawning. Uh, it's an adjustment. It's an indifficult. Seeing one day look like every other day. Yes. Oh my God. Wake up Sunday looks like Tuesday. Friday looks like Wednesday. <laughs> they all look the same. Yes. It's difficult. 
Easter was difficult. Not being in church like so many in times past felt strange to uh, Good Friday service via Zoom. Yes. Sunrise and Easter service on live stream. Yes. It's an adjustment we've had to make. But not only physically, mm -hmm. but mentally and emotionally, yes. there's been adjustments. Come on. One thing that is for sure during these times we're living in the midst of is that we live in the midst of abject and absolute uncertainty. Yes, amen. The mental and emotional toll uh, has been uh, much more tasking and more, more than physical. One of the greatest mental and emotional challenges has been in the area of uncertainty. It's uncertainty in the times that we live in. I want to say to you that at this time, the only thing that we know is that we don't know. Every day the information about the virus changes. Every day the data gets worse. Every time Every day the timeline moves. Every day the different media groups are given different reportings. Our leaderships are at odds with one another. For some it's about money. For others it's about reducing the chances of getting the virus. The president is constantly looking for someone to blame while people are dying. Yes, Lord. We don't know when or if there'll be a vaccine. We don't know how long this virus uh, lives on different surfaces. We don't know how you really contact, contract this virus. We don't know all the symptoms of the virus. We don't know when the shelter in home ban will be lifted or even when it's lifted, how it will affect the contraction of the number of virus uh, people who contract the virus. We don't know when businesses are open. We don't know when we'll be able to travel again. We don't know when we'll be able to go back to church. We don't know when the children will be able to go back to school. We don't know when life will resume to normal, whatever that means. We just don't know. And uncertainty is unsettling because it reminds us that we really aren't in control of our whole lives. Yes, amen. Science can't solve every problem. Bank account can't protect you from the virus. And human authority can't navigate us through these times. Preach, preach. Yes, Lord. Say it. This uncertainty has been a humbling experience to remind us that we're not in control. Right. The unsettling part is that we've been led to believe that our resources can somehow make sure for us that life follows the plan, the uh, path that we plan. Uh, if we plan these things correctly, it'll turn out the way we want it to. We're taught to believe that with the right degree and the right connections and the right money, then life will pay out the way you want it to. But Rona has taught us we ain't in control. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And uncertainty is fertile ground for doubt, despair, depression, worry, fear, anxiety, and all of which surrounds us in the midst of uncertain days and times in which we live. But I'm here to tell you that it's not the result of the pandemic, but it's just the result of life. Life has a way of delivering us through seasons where there are more questions than answers. Life has a way of putting us into a place where uh, that no matter how many degrees you have, you don't have a clue of what's going on around you. Life has a way of putting you in places where you don't know if you're going to get any better. When you are 
in something and you have no idea when it's going to end, life has a way of putting you in that. And you're walking through something and you cannot navigate your way through it. Life has a way of putting you into seasons and places and situations and circumstances when all you know is that you don't know. This reminds us of the people of God in the first five books of the Bible who are wandering in the wilderness. Yes, Jeremiah speaks about it. Mm -hmm. He summarizes what the Lord did for his people. He rescued them from Egypt. He brought them safely through desert wanderings. He gave them rich and fertile land. All of this should have made Israel a grateful and faithful nation. He talked about Egypt. Delivered from Egypt, the, the yoke of the bondage of the Pharaoh, he would, they were delivered. They crossed the Red Sea. God delivered them out of Egypt, protected them along the way, uh, a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Protected them all the way, got them across the Red Sea, drowned the Pharaoh and his army yes. in the Red Sea. Yes, and as soon as they got to the other side, they began to celebrate. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. They began to celebrate. Not because they'd been delivered, because they had no clue of what was going to come their way. Yes, Lord. They had no idea that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness was the next stop on the journey. Mm -hmm. They even complained to Moses that if you would have known what, we, what was awaiting us in the wilderness, we would have stayed in Egypt. Yes, <laughs> wilderness took them through seasons where resources were scarce. Food wasn't plentiful. Water was nowhere to be found. Yes. Wilderness took them through seasons where they watched loved ones die and they couldn't have a proper burial. Yes. Wilderness was a place where they walked in places they had never walked before, experienced things they had never experienced before, endured things they never had to endure before. The wilderness, in the wilderness, Moses' approval rating dropped below floor level. <laughs> They complained and rebelled because there were times that Moses didn't even know yes, amen. where they were going. Right. In the wilderness, they had to trust God yes. Thank you. like they never trusted him before. Amen. They had to trust God when they had no clue where they were going. Mm -hmm. They had to trust God when they uh, had no clue when they would get there. They had to trust God that when they didn't know when the wilderness wandering would be over. They had to trust God when they didn't know how many people would have to die. Right. They had to trust God that not knowing where the resources would come from, how long the journey would be. They wandered in the wilderness. Yes. Amen. That's good. It's a wilderness when you find yourself in the midst of something you didn't see coming. Amen. Who could have seen this coming? Nobody called it early enough. And even if they did, it wouldn't have made a difference. It came. That's right. Amen. You couldn't stop it from coming. Amen. That's right. But who could have thought that last year mm -hmm. we wouldn't even mention COVID-19 Corona 19, yes. i.e. Rona. <laughs> the Amen. Rona. Who could have called it? When you find yourself in the midst of something you didn't see coming. Wilderness, when you didn't prepare. <laughs> you didn't prepare for it, neither can you protect yourself from it. That's a wilderness. Yes. Wilderness is when you feel like it goes from worse to worse. Yes. That's the wilderness. Yes. Wilderness is when you have no answers, yes. when you have no assurances, when you have no sources right. you can trust in, when you have no hope that tomorrow will be better than today, when you have more 
but 40 years of wandering in the wilderness when they had no answers. And they had no assurances, no sources you could trust in when you had no hope that tomorrow would be better than today when you have more questions than you have answers. They found out that God was with them and that God will guide them. We serve a God who guides us through the wilderness. Yeah. Numbers 14, 11 says, the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I performed among them, which, with all the signs. Yes, amen. We quit looking for signs. Started looking at everything else. Quit looking for God's son. Yes. How do I get through this wilderness? Yes. Nobody can give you hope like Jesus came. Oh, right. preacher. One of the signs they received at that time in the wilderness was manna. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Manna is a Hebrew word. It don't mean bread. It doesn't even mean provision. It's not even a noun. It's a question. And it means, what is it? When they first collected the dew, the manna that was on the dew of the morning, they had never seen it before. They said, nothing ever looked like that before. They said, what is it? And through all the 40 years of wandering, they never changed the name. They never changed it to bread or provision. But every morning, for 40 years, the children of Israel picked up the manna and said, what is it? In this new wilderness of COVID-19 season, mm -hmm. we have to be okay with asking questions that are not going to be answered. Yes. 40 years, what is it? Yes. Or they don't have an answer. Mm. There's going to be times, and now is, when we all have questions. Yes. But we have Questions like, why God? That's what. Where is God? Uh, why did my mother have to die? Why did you let my father die? Why did I get laid off my job and somebody else looks like they're prosperous? Have you ever been in a season when you had more questions than answers? Oh, yes. Jeremiah was ministering to a people who had those questions. Where is the Lord? Every day in the journey in the wilderness, a question was raised. We live in a time when uh, every morning we're filled and bombarded with questions. Yes. Every morning we ask, what is it? <laughs> Where is the Lord? I don't know what it is, but I do know God provides. He says in verse 6 Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Where is the Lord? Mm. Uh, says he brought them, led them through the wilderness, through desert places. Mm -hmm. God guides, he provides, yes, Lord. and he guides. Mm. Lord showed him his way safely through the desert. The Lord provided them water in dry places. Yes. 
Lord brought them around danger seen and unseen, those pits and snares that they talk about. It was the Lord who led them through the valley of the shadow of death. It was the Lord who led them to a land where people didn't live or even travel. They'd never been there before. They didn't know where they were at. They didn't know there was no map. There was no uh, uh, GPS. There was nothing to navigate through. But God still led them. Yes. And I'm here to tell you today. That God will still lead you through. Yes, he will. Amen. Through these times we're going through, God still leads. He still provides. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So, I believe that God was showing the children of Israel in the wilderness. One thing we want to look at is by providing them with one day's manna. Yes, Lord. We say, we pray in the Lord's prayer. Yeah. Give us this day, yeah. our daily bread, Come on, one day's provision. Uh, what he was saying is that you can miss the joy yeah. of today, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. worrying about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. He's teaching us to appreciate what today is without being worried about what tomorrow will or will not bring. He's showing us to don't miss the joy of this day. Yes. The Bible reminds us that this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Through these times yes. of difficulties, yes. through these times of change, yes. I don't know if it's going to get better yes. before it gets worse. Yes. I don't know about which way to go in this wilderness. <laughs> Nobody has the answers that suffice my soul. Yes. But my hope yes. is anchored in the Lord. Yes. And I know that if I praise Him right now, yes. if I praise Him in this moment, then at the end of the day, yeah. as he provided for me during the day, yeah. I would have praised him and rejoiced in him all day long. Yeah. It's certain things uh -huh. that I know that Rona can't take away yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. Rona can't take away my salvation. Yeah. Rona can't take away my hope. Yeah. Rona can't take away my 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 blood of Jesus. Yes. Rona can't take away my joy. Yes. Rona can't take away my mercy. Yes. Rona can't take away his grace. Uh, Rona can't take away my king of yes. kings yes. and my lord yes. of lords. Yes. Rona can't take away the trust I have yes. in the Lord. Rona can't take away my faith. Rona can't take away my blessing. Rona can't even take away my praise. As a matter of fact, I think I'm praising right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Glory. Glory to your name. Rona can't take that away. I don't know about you. Nothing else. Mm. So in these uncertain times, yes. 
that in these uncertain days, you put your trust in the God who guides yeah. and the God who provides. He's done it before. Yeah. And he'll do it again. Yes, yes, he, will. he did it for others. Come on. He'll do it for you. Yes, yes. You just have to trust him. And let me say this. Our trust goes beyond the shores of this life. That's right. We can, our hope is in eternity. Yes, it is. What that means for me. Mm. That I know one day. Yes. By hook or by crook. <laughs> You don't have to lay this body down. Come on, very But that's just this body. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day, I'm going to see my Savior face to face. Yes. I, I can trust in that. Yes. So I have to go through what you have to go through. Mm. Amen. I don't, I'm not saying just give it all up today and don't think about tomorrow. We, we need to be thinking about tomorrow, providing for tomorrow, and, and not putting our hope. In a God that's not only the same God yesterday, today, but it's the same God forevermore. Yes. Yeah, but let me tell you something. If he provided for you yesterday, yeah. and he's providing for you today, how much more? How much more? What you worried about? What you stressed about? Mm. What you in despair about? Right. Trust God. The God who guides. That's right. God who provides. Mm. The God who's able, still able to guide us through these wilderness experiences. Yes, Lord. So yes, we're in a wilderness season. <laughs> yes, we are. We're in a what is it? What is it? Season. <laughs> but he still gives us bread from heaven. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. yes thank you, Jesus. And this word of God is still true. Yes, it is. And no matter what, mm. Lord, I can't stop that. Amen. Listen, Amen. so if you're worried and all that, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. In other words, that, that be anxious means don't worry. Yes. He said, let your prayer be made known unto God. Mm. In other words, don't worry about everything, anything, but pray about everything. Yes. Let your prayer be made known unto God. Yes. And God will provide yes. his peace. Mm. Thank you. In you. Thank you. A piece that they don't sign on a piece of paper. Mm. It's not an accord. Right. It's not temporary. It's permanent. Yes. A piece that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord. And it's to guard. It will guard your heart yes. against all the negativity that's trying to come at you right now. Yes. It'll guard your heart. Thank you. Against all the misinformation that you're being taught. It'll guard your heart against worry, despair, stress. It'll guard your heart. It'll bring joy out of you. And people wonder why you praise them God. Come on. Hallelujah. Good. Tell them. Glory. Tell them about Jesus. Yes. So I want to encourage you to tell somebody about Jesus during this, especially this time. It's a great time to tell somebody. As they stress and worry and practice social distancing. You might have to be six or eight feet away. Holler it to them. <laughs> Holler. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Y'all thought, see, see how God was preparing us already? Yeah. Holler. Holler. So holler to them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let them know. That he still saves, he's still on the throne, he still guides, he still provides. And it's, yes, we have questions, but God is the answer. Yes. And the main question that we need, we're worried about, is our own mortality. Mm. That we'll one day we're gonna have to, we're gonna leave this place, we're gonna die. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whether it's by Corona or slipping on a banana peel, it, it's just just life. But if you have a savior, you have hope in the midst yeah. of life. Yes. You have someone to lead you and guide you right in the midst of life. So tell somebody about Jesus. Just go and ask them, will they open their heart to Jesus today? 
and receive him as their Lord and Savior. If you'll come in and change their hearts for now and forevermore. And so we thank God for you. The God who still guides us through. Don't miss that. So just, just start praising God every chance you get. Every moment you get. Praise God. You got that daily provision. Give us this day. You can, you can kind of throw it around to give us this day our daily praise. Yeah. Give us this day our daily worship. That's daily bread. That's bread yes. from heaven. Yes, Lord. And so we want to thank you for being here today. We hope we receive this message today during this time that you can know that I have a God who's able. I have a God who's able to see me through. So I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow's going to bring its own uh, worries. Yes. And I'm not even going to worry about today because I'm here and blood is running warm in my veins. As long as there's breath in my body, I can tell somebody about Jesus. So we thank God for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for being a God who never gives up on us even though Lord, we have questions. Sometimes like in Jeremiah, where is the Lord? When? Where was God? When? God's always been there. Always was, always is, always will be. We just have to seek him where he can be found. And not necessarily where we want to seek him at. God is God. And we thank you for being a God who uh, doesn't conform to our idea of who you are. But you show us who you are so that we can conform into your idea of who you are and not only that, who you want us to be. And so, God, give somebody courage, give somebody boldness, give somebody a praise and a worship and a song on their heart today. Lord, just uh, touch us all as we go through this day and continue to remind us that it is God who sees us through. praise now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.